In this video, we'll do some questions with the floor and ceiling function. So this isn't a big enough topic to bring up in a separate lecture video, so I'll just do a couple of exercises with it. Okay, so what is the ceiling? Well, the ceiling, which we see in this negative 0.99 with these upside down L's, what this does is it takes a real number and rounds it up to the nearest integer. So negative 0.99 rounded up to the nearest integer is going to be zero. And what about the ceiling of 2.1? Well, the ceiling of 2.1 here rounds up to the nearest integer and the integer after two is three. Okay, so what about the floor function? Well, the floor takes a real number and rounds it down. So 2.1, the floor of 2.1, is just going to be two. And the floor of negative 0.1 is going to take negative 0.1, round it down, so that will end up at negative one. So if you remember on a number line, if we have zero here, negative one here, if we put negative 0.1 on the line, it'll be about here. So we round down to negative one. I know it seems like, hey, maybe rounding down means back to zero, but uh, if we look on the number line and we place these down, if it's the floor, we move left. If it's the ceiling, we move right. So that's how we look at this with a number line. Okay, so let's do a computation question here with a floor and a ceiling. So we want the floor of two thirds plus the ceiling of a half. Okay, so first we're gonna do the ceiling of one half. So we're going to end up with the floor of two thirds plus, well, the ceiling of one half is going to be one. So now we want the floor of two thirds plus one. So this is just the floor of 1.6 roughly, and that is just one. Okay, so that's some computation questions. Let's give you a formal definition of floor and ceiling. So if the floor of X is equal to an integer n, so this x is going to be a real number, n is going to be an integer, then we say that x is greater or equal to n, but strictly less than n plus one. Because if x was equal to n plus one, then the floor would equal n plus one. So we want it to be strictly less. Uh, for the ceiling, it's pretty much the same definition. What we're saying here is that if the ceiling of x is equal to n, then x is going to be less than or equal to n, but strictly greater than n minus one. So we're gonna use this definition to do a proof here. So what's the proof? Well, for x in the reals, m in the integers, the floor of x plus m is equal to the floor of x plus m. Okay, so what's our definition? Well, if x is, or the floor of x is equal to n, then x is going to be greater or equal to n but strictly less than n plus one. Okay, so we wanna get the floor of x plus m. So we already have an x here, so let's just add m into this equal inequality here. So we're gonna get n plus m is strictly less, or sorry, is less than or equal to x plus m, which is strictly less than n plus m plus one. Okay, so what do we notice here? Well, we have the same pattern as our definition. So we can bracket this x plus m, n plus m, n plus m plus one. And we see that the definition here, well, if we use the definition, this is like saying that the floor of x plus m is equal to n plus m. So again, we just added m to each of these statements here, and of course it preserves the inequality since all m's are equal. Okay, so now we have this statement, the floor of x plus m is equal to n plus m, but what is n? Well, n we defined as the floor of x. So there we have a proof that the floor of x plus m is equal to the floor of x plus m. Okay, so that's it for uh, ceiling and floor functions. Of course what you can do is you can try to do the same proof with ceilings. So check it out, post it in the uh, comments if you have a solution. And of course, there are many more proofs that you can do as well. So uh, you can check online for those. I may do another video on it, but it's not planned in the near future. So please leave your questions in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.